Hello there, in this video we're going to be going over how to provision a Mitel IP phone with free PBX using the Endpoint Manager. Now I should say right away that to do this using Endpoint Manager you will unfortunately need to purchase Endpoint Manager from free PBX. It does cost 150 bucks, but it does get you a 25 year license, so it is a very good deal. Uh, first thing we're going to need to do to properly set this up before we even think about going into uh, free PBX is we're going to want to clear any settings out of this phone in case you got this from a working environment or whatever uh, the situation is. You want to clear out all the settings that way there's no accidental uh, conflict of settings. So what you're going to want to do is if you have a power adapter you're going to want to plug that in. In our case we're using power over ethernet and we have a power over ethernet switch behind me. We're going to go ahead and on the back of this phone, there is uh, one, there is another ethernet port behind there. It's kind of blocked by the switch. It's actually right above it here. This is for a PC if you want to do a pass through. Apologize for the blur there, but you're gonna to want to plug the ethernet cable into that port right there. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then immediately, we're going to hold down the down key for the volume on the phone as the phone is booting up. So you're gonna to want to hold that, continue to hold it, until you see this menu. Now right here, it might look a little different on yours because I already had it set up on SIP. But if it's not set up on SIP, it's gonna be set up on Mitel's own little uh, SIP, thing, SIP thing, much like a Cisco phone like this one, right here would be on SCCP. They would be set up on my voice. So we're gonna clear out any settings we used to have. So we're gonna go configure phone, we're gonna hit star for yes. <clears throat> we're going to hit no, which is pound, until we get to tools and features. We're going to hit yes. We're going to keep going no all the way clear through until we get to restore defaults. At this point, we're going to hit star for yes. We're going to confirm that. It's going to say please wait. And it's going to reset the phone. You're going to want to hold the down key again once the screen goes white and blank. And now what you'll see is that we're going to need to completely set up the phone. So now we're going to configure the phone. We want to hit yes. The first thing we need to do is we need to switch this phone to SIP. <coughs> because when you reset a phone, it's going, to re it's going to default to my voice, which is not SIP. And then we will have issues configuring the phone if it's on my voice. So we're going to hit no until we get to phone mode. We're going to hit yes. Protocol, we're going to hit yes. Phone mode is my net. As you can see, that's not what we want. We're going to hit star to change that. And zero is for SIP, so we're going to hit zero. We're going to hit pound to accept that. We're going to store those changes. It's going to save it to the phone. It's going to ask you if you want to reboot. You're going to hit star for yes. And once again, as usual, press and hold down until you get your settings menu again. At this point, you're going to see the menu and you're going to hold off here. You're going to leave it. Ignore that. If you get a fatal exception, you can ignore that. Uh, at this point, we're going to go into free PBX and we're going to uh, set up endpoint manager. And then we're going to come back here and type in everything that the phone needs to know to boot up. Okay, so now that we have the phone reset and ready to be configured, we're going to go into free PBX. You can get your IP address from the uh, server. We're going to log into the GUI. And we're going to see, I mean, we have a disabled module and all that stuff, but there are some issues with free PBX, but this is a home server, so it's not that much of an issue. Uh, we will see that we need to go uh, to applications. We're going to go to extensions to configure an extension. In my case, we already have this one set up. It's extension 2004. But in case you don't have it set up, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you have uh, Chan SIP, which is the legacy version. You want to make sure that you have that configured as the primary version of SIP in asterisk IP asterisk SIP settings, and you want to switch the ports uh, from 5160 uh, to 5060. There's another video on that by Crosstalk Solutions. I'll link that down uh, in the description, or I'll put it in the eye up top, and you can go click to watch how to do that. But let me just show you how we have this set up. So we're going to uh, click on the pencil to edit the settings. As you can see here, uh, the display name is, I just said, of Mitel 5340 because this is mainly a test server. The extension is already set up. The secret is already set up. You don't need to worry about that with Endpoint Manager. Voicemail I have set up, blah, blah, blah. The important stuff we need to know is an advanced 
There's a few settings you need to change in here, actually one setting. We scroll down, you'll see we need to change the setting of qualify. It's by default set to yes, and as you can see, setting to yes will send an options packet to the endpoint periodically. Used to monitor the health of the endpoint. If delays are longer, the endpoint will be taken offline and considered unreachable. Now, for whatever reason, the Mitel series IP phones do have some sort of issue with qualify, and oftentimes after a minute, the phone will go offline, and the only way to fix that would be to reboot it, and that's a pain in the neck. So to fix that, we're just gonna, it would say yes here, we're going to change that to no and then hit submit to save those settings. If you have no password set up, you're just going to hit OK. And no will automatically disable con with disable qualify and then you should be fine and the phone should work. At this point, we're going to go to settings. We're going to go to endpoint manager. If this is your first time using endpoint manager, you're going to want to click on the bar here, hit global settings. And we'll have our internal and external address. If there's nothing here, you'll see it's like enter none to disable or auto to auto detect. So what you'll want to do is you will want to uh, type in auto for both of them and then it will pull the IP address of the internal and external IP addresses. So let me just reset that. Obviously it's blacked out because it's my external IP address. We do not need anyone knowing that. Uh, ports will already be set up. Again, the TFTP, TFTP TFTP, excuse me, port is 69. That's what you're going to use to configure the phone on Mitel. And then if you want to change the user and admin password, you can. It doesn't affect Mitel phones. The settings I like to change here are extension mapping IP addresses and extension mapping phone status. These are by default set to no. I like to set them to yes because what that will do is after you click Save Global, if you go to extension mapping, that will give you these two columns right here, IP address status. Uh, those, it'll tell you both of them. It'll tell you the IP address of the phone and it'll tell you the status. And the status is basically a ping to the phone. And the, the, the smaller the number of milliseconds, the more responsive the phone is. Uh, as you can see here, we do have uh, yellow bars. We will fix that in a second. But the first thing we're gonna want to do is we're gonna wanna go to add brand under advanced and it will normally be here because I already have set up a Mitel phone. Uh, it's not here, but you'll hit the Mitel button. At that point, you'll get a Mitel uh, template by default. You're gonna wanna name it whatever you want. So in this case, I just named it Mitel default. You're gonna wanna set the time zone, the time server and all that. And then you're gonna wanna hit save and apply. And at that point, it'll reload. And then you'll have this option here for available phones. Now, in my case, the only phone I have is a 5340. But if you have any other type of phone here that's compatible with 3PBX, you would click on that and then the configuration menu will pop up. Now it's confusing because there is no image available, but the confusing thing about configuring a Mitel phone's keys is that it goes right to left and, to, and from bottom to top. So soft key one, as you saw on the phone, is actually the bottom right soft key. Soft key two is the bottom left soft key. Soft key three is the second, second from the bottom on the right. So it's a little confusing. If you don't want uh, keys on both sides of the phone, then you can alternate by, um, by the numbers. So again, the odd numbers are on the right, the even numbers are on the left, and you can fit a maximum of up to eight keys per page. So uh, soft key one, again, bottom right, I have two lines. I have a BLF key right here for the general voicemail box, which is uh, that. You can use the uh, voicemail prefix and then the extension number you'd like to reach. In my case, it's usually star 98, but I changed it to 1098. So it's 1098 4000 will give you a BLF key when there is a message in that voice mailbox. And then if you hit the key, it'll also speed dial to that button. We have a speed dial for page. We have a BLF for do not disturb, which is the toggle function. We have a speed dial to send to park. And we have the two BLF keys for the park one and park two. So if there is a call parked on 7001 or 7002, that key will be lit up. So this is actually eight keys right here. So this is only one page, but you can go as much as to, as far as you want. And like I said, if you use two, four, six, eight, etc., you can also program keys on the left side of the phone. Whenever you're done with that, you're going to want to hit save model and you're going to want to hit save and apply. Next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to go to extension mapping. And we're going to want to select all of our phones, or in this case, if you want to only select your Mitel phone, that's fine too.
but we're going to want to save, rebuild, and update the phone. Because saving and rebuilding the configs works and it'll turn everything green, but it won't update the phone. So if you change the preference, the phone won't actually update until the phone either loses power and is rebooted, or you pull the plug and plug it back in. Whatever the situation is, the phone will actually grab the new settings unless you um, reboot it. So if you are running a larger business, what I suggest is that you don't rebuild and update uh, phones until, let's say, if it's a business nine to five, you don't do this until the business is closed. Because what this will do is it will drop all calls that the phones are using. So if I have calls coming from 2001 and 2002, if they're on calls and I hit rebuild and update, those phone calls will be dropped, the phone will reset and reconfigure. So you don't wanna do this in the middle of a work day. After hours is perfectly fine, but after we do that, we'll click on you selected, and then you'll give it a second. You don't need to, you don't need to mash the button. It will reboot as usual. And then the page will reload. And ideally, everything you've selected will turn green. Perfect. And then the last thing we want to do right now is hit Apply Config to uh, save all the settings we've done. Perfect. Now, in Endpoint Manager, what you want to do to configure an extension is you're going to uh, click on Add Extension. Down here, it says Custom Extension. You're going to want to click on that. It'll normally be an extension that you already have set up. In my case, I've already set up all my extensions, so that's why I don't see an uh, empty extension here. But let's say I did not set up 2004. We, it, would, it would be uh, in this drop down here, we would select 2004 and account one. For the brand, we would select Mitel, and then it'll already automatically change the template here. And then you just need to select what kind of phone you want. And if you know the MAC address, then you type it in here and you will hit save and rebuild this way. When the, Mac, when the uh, My Telephone with this MAC address connects to the server, it'll automatically say, hey, this phone should be extension 2004. I'm gonna pull the config files for this template and automatically set it to 2004. Okay, so now that we've configured everything we need to in Endpoint Manager and Free PBX, we've set everything up, we've gone to extension mapping and we've configured the phone to, uh, to map based on its MAC address, which is on the back of the phone. You can pull the MAC address from here, and it will be in that barcode box right there. I apologize for the bad view, but you can pull the MAC address right there, and then you can set it up so it'll immediately route to this phone. Now we need to point the phone to the free PBX server. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit star for yes to configure. Network settings, we don't need to configure those. We do need to configure network parameters. So we're gonna hit star for that. We don't need to view the current values. We don't need to worry about static QoS but we do need to worry about static IPv4. So we're gonna hit yes for that. We don't care about viewing them, but we do need to modify the parameters. So we're gonna hit star for yes. And at this point, you can use the up and down arrow keys to scroll. We're gonna scroll past all these different settings. Host name is the first setting you're going to change. Host name is whatever your free PBX server is labeled. In my case, it's labeled home, all lowercase. Default is free PBX, all one word. Whatever you have your host name name to is what you're going to want to point this host name to. So you're going to use the number pad and the same way you use the text on an old phone. We're going to hit home. We're going to set home using uh, the, the letters on the keypad. At that point we're good. We're going to hit down to continue. It's going to ask you for your proxy address. You're going to hit star for IPv4, but then skip this section. You're not going to enter an IP address here. You will, however, enter the TFTP server IP address, and this is what the, your internal IP address will be in global settings for Endpoint Manager. So in our case, as you saw, our uh, IP address is 10.0.0.0.204. TFTP, uh, TFTP server report by default is 69, so you're gonna wanna enter that there. Whoop. IP IP address is something you're going to skip. You're going to continue. DSN1, DNS1, I'm sorry, is uh, your first DNS server. You can get that from System Admin. I'll show you that as well. In our case, it's 75.75.75.75. And our DNS2 is 75.75.75. Oh, that's 76.76. You're going to hit down. It's going to ask you if you want to store your changes. You will hit yes. 
and then it's going to ask you to reboot the phone, and you will hit yes. This is the only time you will not want to hold down any arrow keys or whatever. You're actually going to want the phone to boot up. And at this point, the phone is going to boot up as it normally would. It's going to try to contact your TFTP server, which is automatically set up in free PBX. And since we've configured everything already in uh, Endpoint Manager, what should happen is, is that the phone's going to grab its configuration files from Endpoint Manager and automatically configure itself and come up. The nice thing about my telephones is that the BLF keys do work if you program it through Endpoint Manager. And it's also a relatively fast boot up process, as you'll see. It'll cycle through this a number of times. If you see it come up and it might say TFTP not found, or in this case, main not found, that's okay. What's gonna happen next is it's gonna say starting SIP and it's gonna start downloading those files. And in a few seconds, you'll see what will happen is it'll pull up all the menu settings we had right there. The, the uh, line keys will all flash and then you'll get your extension right here. And you'll see, if we have a line, we can dial our sample number 7777 and hit pound to send it. Hello, and thank you for calling. If you know the extension you'd like to reach. And it works, as you can see. The other really nice thing about this is that the voicemail key does work. So you can hit the voicemail key and it will dial your voicemail. Yeah. And if you have a voicemail, like I will send it a quick voicemail, one second. Testing one, two, testing one, two. You'll also see that the voicemail key up here and the voicemail button both light up. And then all you need to do is hit here to get your messages. Again, the BLF keys do work as well. So if I send a call to park, seven, zero, zero, you can see one. the park key lights up. Does work very, very well. And that should be all to it. And then your, uh, your IP phone is successfully set up. As you can see, we can make calls, so we can send a call to 2001. That's ringing behind me. And we can also receive calls. And you can adjust the ringer as the phone is ringing. So if we push it up, you see it's much louder. The one thing I'd like to point out that's a little important is that the microphone, for whatever reason, on the Mitel handsets is very sensitive. So what I do to, so, to solve that is I put painter's tape or any kind of tape over the microphone because if you try to send a page and there are other phones nearby, it will be incredibly loud and send feedback, which is not something anyone wants. So that There's one other feature I forgot to mention that's really nice with the Mitel phones, and you wouldn't expect it to work with free PBX, but in addition to taking uh, normal calls and receiving normal calls, it also works with paging and intercom. So as you can see, a normal call going in works just as fine. But if I send an intercom call using the intercom prefix, that, that also, also works, works as, well. as well. And you can also obviously send intercom calls out that way too. But intercom does work and Paging, paging also works. And the reason why that sounded a little louder was because there are other phones right next to it. Uh, but that is it for the video. So thank you for watching. If you have any suggestions or something you'd like me to do a tutorial on, please let me know in the comments below. I have a lot of time on my hands with quarantine. So anything you have free PBX related, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thanks for watching.